Right, hello guys, DJ Backwards here, and welcome back to Analyzing Arsenal and the second Analyzing Arsenal of the brand new football season. Now, yes, I know we're in World Cup fever mode. The World Cup is currently running, and I'm doing loads of videos based on the World Cup. Well, not really, I've only done two, but still, you know, why are you, you're going to be sitting there and thinking to yourself, why on earth are you doing an Analyzing Arsenal video? Well, this is sort of an update, really, because there's been a, a lot of Arsenal news recently that has gone on over the last kind of week, two weeks or so, and I kind of haven't said anything about it. I haven't, you know, tweeted about it. I haven't done a video about this. Um, so in this video, I'm going to be covering that. I'm going to be giving my thoughts and feelings to not one, not two, but three Arsenal points of discussion. So you're going to get three videos all in one video. So all three points of discussion. So three videos in one. Three discussions in one. You're welcome. So uh, first and foremost, um, I'm going to be giving you my thoughts and feelings to uh, the news that we have signed a brand new goalkeeper in Leno. Bernard Leno. Is it Bernard? But Bernard, yeah, but Leno, that guy, Leno. We've got Leno as our new goalkeeper. I'm also going to be giving my thoughts and feelings to the news of Jack Wilshere's departure. So Leno signs, Wilshere leaves. And also, I'm going to be giving my thoughts and feelings to this. Arsenal's fixture list for the Premier League season, season 2018-2019. Um, those fixtures were announced last week. I didn't get a chance to do a video, so I'm doing it in this one. So we've got three points. We've got three items on the agenda. Let's jump into this. So let's start with my thoughts and feelings to the news that Arsenal have signed a new goalkeeper. And it's quite nice. It really is nice. Unai Emery, not only is he signing players... But he's doing it early. I mean, like, is this Christmas? Like, seriously, what the fuck is going on? Arsenal are not only buying players, but they're doing it right at the start of the window. Um, you know, it's it's encouraging. It's a very, very positive start, really. Um, before we signed Leno, we've already made a signing. Unai Emery's official first signing um, was the signing of Lichsteiner. Again, didn't, you know, tweet about that whatsoever. I didn't make a single comment about that. Um, quickly touching upon Lichsteiner's... Uh, Lichsteiner's? Um, talking about Lichsteiner's um, signing... I do think it's a good signing. Um, obviously, he's not a world-class right-back, but he's very experienced. Um, he knows um, how to play in the position. Um, he's quite a tactful-minded um, kind of, you know, full-back, which we're very used to at Arsenal. You think of, you know, Klasenac and Bellerin. You know, they do get forward quite a lot, and uh, Lichsteiner likes to get forward, you know, and um, I've been watching bits of him um, in kind of his pretty previous club, and, you know, he does like to get forward. He's quite adventurous, but he's got that kind of, that metal steel in him. You know, he's quite a, a nasty, and and we need that. We need a little bit of nastiness in the sign. He certainly has got that. Um, you know, and it's, it's it's a positive signing, really, for me. I think not only if he can add a bit of experience and a bit of, you know, nastiness and ruthlessness into the squad, but also if he can actually work with Bellerin, because Bellerin has got the potential to be, a, you know, a sensational and a wonderful um, kind of right back. And he just isn't. So if Rich Steiner can work with him and make Bellerin as good, uh, you know, sitting back and defending as he's going forward, I think Bellerin is actually better going forward rather than defending. And as a right back, you need to defend rather than going forward. Or, you know, if you can do both of the parts, if you can go forward and also get back and also do both of those, uh, you know, into a, uh, to the best of your ability and do them really, really well, then that will be great. But, you know, Bellerin lacks that. You know, going forward at times is sensational. It's not so sensational, less favourable at the back. So hopefully Steiner can work on him. But it's a good signing, a positive signing. Um, but then we acquired Leno. Now, officially, Leno um, signs on the 1st of July. So that will be when um, he joins Arsenal. Um, but he will be joining Arsenal. Like it, the, the signing is official, but it won't be officially, officially, officially done um, until the 1st of July 2018. Um, what do I think about this? Well, you know, we've been crying out for a goalkeeper for, for many, many, many years, like generally. We have been waiting so long for a world-class goalkeeper. And, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying here that Leno is a world-class goalkeeper. I'll get on to what I mean. But, you know, for years, it's been staring us so fucking close in the face that we need a goalkeeper, like a world-class goalkeeper. You think back to David Seaman, <laughs> Seaman, um, <laughs> and then the uh, invincible goalkeeper, Jens Lehmann, you know, the, the goalkeeper, the leader of the Invincibles. And like those two, those two goalkeepers on them own, you know, were fabulous, absolutely sensational, world-class goalkeepers. You know, Seaman was one of the best goalkeepers I've ever seen. You know, Lehman, he had a couple of dodgy moments, but he was the goalkeeper part of the Invincible squad. You know, he will go down in history. Um, since Seaman and Lehman, um, the goalkeepers that we've acquired have been 
less favourable, shall we say. We've had good goalkeepers, don't get me wrong, we've had very, very good goalkeepers, but we haven't had, like, a world-class goalkeeper. You know, we had Almunia, Fabianski, um, we had Vito Minone, then we had um, Petr Cech, David Ospina, um, you know, the, the catalogue of goalkeepers that we've had who have been, you know, good goalkeepers individually, and on their day they've been, you know, absolutely brilliant in moments, but over a consistent basis, um, Arsenal have just not had a decent goalkeeper. You know, I actually think that Fabianski and Chesney, despite how problematic they were at Arsenal, since moving on, they are they've become like really good. Like Chesney is is brilliant, like now, in my opinion. Um, you know, and we, we've been, we, you know, every top side needs a very, very good goalkeeper. They need a world-class goalkeeper. You know, when we acquired Petr Cech in 2015, we thought that was the answer. We believed that was the answer. You know, the talk of, of the Terence was that Petr Cech was going to give Arsenal 10 to 12 extra points and he was going to perplex Arsenal to become a Premier League champion as well. Just for the record, ladies and gentlemen, he didn't. <laughs> he just didn't. And, like, he's just declined. And, like, when he came to Arsenal, he was a world-class goalkeeper. Now, he's an average goalkeeper. Now, I know he's getting older and age does play a part, but he has not improved. He has not improved his career. He's not helped his career one iota since joining Arsenal. In fact, um, I think he's actually ruined his career going to Arsenal. Um, he's an absolute sham of, of the goalkeeper that he once was at Chelsea. Um, so, yeah. Petr Cech is past it. Davos Spina, a good goalkeeper. Not a great goalkeeper, but in moments is brilliant. But he won't, you know, Davos Spina being in goal is not going to win you the Premier League or win you the Champions League. You know, yes, he might win you a couple of FA Cups, as did Petr Cech, as did Lucas Fabianski. But it's not enough. You know, we, we need we need a proper, you know, world-class goalkeeper. Now, the problem with that is that there are not many world-class goalkeepers out there. You think of David De Gea, Manuel Neuer, Hugo Lloris... And maybe, just maybe, you could have put Thibaut Courtois into that equation. Not so um, sure on that now. But certainly De Gea, Neuer and Lloris are, in my opinion, the three best goalkeepers. You could also maybe could throw other ones into the works like Kilo Navas, Stegen. Um, I also think Oblak is a fantastic goalkeeper, you know, goalkeeper of Atletico Madrid. Um, but Leno is a, is a good goalkeeper. Um, he spent seven years at Bayer Leverkusen. Um, and he's 26. I'm just, I've got up his uh, facts file on the uh, good old interweb. I've uh, also watched some compilations of some of his you know, saves. And he is a very, very good goalkeeper. And what I like about Leno is that not only is he, you know, he, he's a tall, you know, he's acrobatic. Um, he's got that, that, again, that nastiness. Very much what Lichstein has where, you know, he will command, you know, his defence that are sitting in front of him to defend, like he won't stand for any nonsense, and that's what we need, we need nastiness, we need ruthlessness into the club, um, and it's positive, you know, he must be, and surely Leno is going to be our number one goalkeeper, it would be absolutely ludicrous if Petr Cech is still the number one, you know, uh, surely Leno is going to be our no new number one goalkeeper, and Petr Cech will be number two, David Ospina number three, whether we're actually going to sell David Ospina or even sell Petr Cech, um, that remains to be seen, but certainly... You know, you bring in a goalkeeper, you expect them to be your number one goalkeeper. So, you know, we have to wait and see on that part. But um, it's, a, it's a positive signing. You know, we just, we need a goalkeeper, really. And you know, as I said earlier, you know, there's not many top goalkeepers around at the moment. So the fact that we've got and acquired a fairly decent goalkeeper, um, it's it's a good stepping stone. And it's a positive start. And I can't wait to see what he's going to do for Arsenal. I can't wait to see him in that Arsenal goalkeeper shirt. And, you know, he's going to have a great start. If he, does, if he is our number one goalkeeper, you know, his first two opponents that we're going to come on to in just a moment, with the fixtures, um, like we're going to see right from the get go whether Leno is up to the task of being the next Arsenal goalkeeper. So that is going to be a very interesting and uh, quite exciting proposition and encounter, really. So that's the first kind of item in the agenda ticked and completed. Now on to uh, slightly more saddened news, really, and, and more to uh, and kind of more onto like oppressing matters, really. Um, after 17 years of good service, Jack Wilshire is now leaving Arsenal. Um, and that broke, I believe, on Monday or Tuesday of this week. And uh, I'm, I'm quite upset about that, really, because, you know, it's, it's like, it's like the, the old legends of Arsenal are moving on. Now, I, even though I'm, in my heart of heart, quite upset to see Jack Wilshere leave and officially leave, um, it has been coming, it has been on the cards, um, you know, and in my, in my head, looking at him and watching him walk away, um, it's quite a sad thing, really. Um, but I... 
Firstly, and there are two reasons. First and foremost, I understand why he's doing it. And secondly, I do think it's going to enhance his career. Um, but it is sad to see someone who's put, you know, almost two decades of their career into a club, you know, for them just to walk away. Um, it is, it's a very, very sad uh, and kind of quite a depressing way, really, to, to end your career. But, you know... What we have to, to, to bear in mind, really, is that, you know, Jack Wilshere has had a, a very, very tough career, really. You know, you think back to it, Jack Wilshere burst onto the scene at kind of 16, 17, and he looked like an absolutely fabulous player. He's a fabulous player. There's, you know, there's no kind of, you know, question or argument um, in regards to that. He's a fantastic player. He's a fabulous player. But he's not world class. And when he burst onto the scene, you know, he had so much energy and enthusiasm and, and just fantastic talent that you thought... This kid's going to be world class. He's going to be like one of the best midfielders in the world. And that was what many people were predicting. And that prediction just failed because he didn't. And, you know, what's been so unfortunate is that, you know, he's been just riddled with injuries for, for his entire career. You know, and injuries have not helped him. When you're constantly, you know, getting injured and losing, you know, game time and not having that consistency, um, it is going to stagnate your career. And if you think like... This season has been a rarity in Arsenal Wenger's final season as Arsenal manager. You know, Jack Wilshere actually got, you know, quite a, a decent amount of game time. But it still was enough. He still didn't go um, off to the World Cup with Gareth Southgate um, for England's World Cup campaign in Russia. And he wasn't a first-team regular under Arsene Wenger. Yes, he played. He played quite a lot last season. But he wasn't, you know, when the team sheet was, uh, you know, announced, you know, every single week, you weren't thinking, oh, Jack Wilshere's an absolute cert to be on the team sheet. Because he wasn't. And, uh, you know, that that is a major problem, really. Um, and Jack Wilshere, no matter where he goes, injuries will always haunt him. I mean, when he went to, to Bournemouth in the 2016-17 season on loan, um, he actually did really, really well at Bournemouth. But, again, his uh, kind of, you know, Bournemouth journey um, ended abruptly because he got injured. So, you know, that, that is a big thing, really. And, you know, so the first thing, really, is that, you know, he's getting, you know, constant injuries and, you know, is that's not changing at Arsenal. That's the first problem. And the second problem is he's not getting first team football. And, you know, he had a meeting with Unai Emery and, you know, Jack Wilshere wanted to stay. Like, let's not, you know, beat around the bush. You know, Jack Wilshere wanted to remain and be an Arsenal player. You know, he loves Arsenal. He lives and breathes Arsenal. He, you know, he would die for the, you know, Arsenal football club generally, you know. And you can see it when he speaks about Arsenal, when he's vocal about Arsenal, and even on the pitch. He's got that nastiness. He's got that ruthlessness, um, and he wants to. He wants everything. He wants to give everything, you know, everything and anything for Arsenal Football Club. However, you know, Unai Emery basically said to him that you're not going to get, you know, first team football. He was even, you know, considering, you know, deducting his pay just so he could stay at Arsenal. That's how much he loved the football club. But Unai Emery was, you know, very honest, very frank, and he said that he will be. And he said that, you know, in in terms of what Unai Emery's plan is. You know, Jack Wilshere is not going to be getting first team football. And that that's a shame. You know, that, that is a shame. But then, you know, I only want what's best for Jack Wilshere. Jack Wilshere wants to enhance his career. And if by enhancing his career, it means that he has to go, you know, somewhere new and kind of try and kickstart his career, um, then, you know, we just have to sit there and say, you know, we wish Jack Wilshere all the very best. And we hope um, that he can become the great player and a world-class player that we know he can be. You know, what you have to also bear in mind is, is that, Jack Wilshere is a fabulous player, but at this stage he's not world class. You know, without Jack Wilshere, it's not like you know losing Jack Wilshere means that Arsenal are not going to win the Premier League. I mean, you know, it's very far fetched that. But like, if we lose Jack Wilshere, does that mean we're not even, we're not even going to get into the Europa League next season? Like, do you know what I mean? We're not going to be like. You know, losing Jack Wilshere, it's not like a major blow, really. And that's me being brutally honest, it's not a major blow. You know, it's not like when we, you know, even though losing Sanchez ultimately helped us, when we were losing Alexis Sanchez, it felt worse because, you know, Sanchez is a world class player. Jack Wilshere isn't a world class player. He's a good player, he's a great player, but he's not world class. Um, and, you know, as long as he doesn't go to, like, you know, imagine if he went to, like, Manchester City, United, you know, Tottenham, Chelsea, or Liverpool and, like, perplexed them and, you know, took them to winning the Premier League title. You know, I'd be sitting here this time next season thinking what a complete knob I am um, but what I think is going to happen is I think he's going to go to a mid-table side and then I generally 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 believe that he's got the potential to take that mid-table side to getting into Europe yeah and that is how good I think Jack Wilshere can get you know should he find consistency should he be injury free should he go to a mid-table side that needs a little spark a little bit of creativity in the midfield Jack Wilshere you know could be the difference and could be the difference of taking a mid-table side in the Premier League to challenge him for European pedigree next season. And, you know, that's where I want him to go. I want him to go to, like, you know, I'd actually like to see him at Newcastle. 
You know, I'd like to see him at Newcastle or Burnley, you know, a, a team that has got the potential to break into European pedigree, but, you know, it, it's just slightly off. You know, they need something. They need a big, big signing. And whoever gets Jack Wilshere, what a big signing that will be. Um, so those are my thoughts and feelings in regards to Jack Wilshere's departure from Arsenal. That's the second item um, off the agenda. Um, third and uh, finally, um, what we need to get off the agenda is my thoughts and feelings to this. The fixture list. Arsenal's fixture list for the 2018-2019 Premier League season. And it's a, it's a big season next season for Arsenal in the Premier League. Obviously, you know, under a new manager, Unai Emery's first season in the Premier League, first season in charge, you know, all eyes are going to be on Unai Emery. The pressure on Unai Emery is going to be, you know, gargantuan, really, because, you know, it, it's it's all down to him. If he fucks this up, you know, it could ruin him. You know, it's, it's a huge, huge task. And, you know, starting a Premier League season as a new manager, you know, and I'm excited because I've never had this before. I can't wait to see a new manager at the Emirates and, you know, watch the side that I love managed by someone else. Like, it's it's such an exciting time, really. And, you know, in regards to Unai Emery making, you know, transfers, you know, we've seen for so many years Arsenal, you know, not, let alone make transfers, but they don't even make transfers early. You know, in the most, like, recent times, in the last kind of three, four, or five years. We've been waiting into January the 31st and we still haven't fucking signed anyone. And Unai Emery's already got, I think, three players already. So he's got Lichsteiner, he's got Leno, and I think Socrates um, is done, but it hasn't been officially confirmed yet. That's already three players. And what I'm also liking is that Unai Emery is addressing the, the problems in key areas of the squad. So, you know, we know that we've needed a goalkeeper for like, for years. So that's, you know, problem one sorted. Don't necessarily think that we need a right back. I don't mean that's a major problem, but we've got a right back. Okay. And then he's um, brought a centre back in Socrates, should Socrates, you know, and that signing be officially confirmed, which I think it will be. You know, all we need now is uh, like a Vieira. Like, ever since we've lost Patrick Vieira, you know, Arsenal have never been the same again. We need a proper, world class, kind of like a Kante that will sit in front of the back four, behind the attackers, and just defend. And that is their sole solid job, like a Matic, like a Kante, defend. And, you know, if we get that, we're in business because we don't need any more attackers. We've got Aubameyang, we've got Lacazette, we've got Urza, we've got Ramsey. You know, and, and coincidentally, Ramsey's like the last of, of his kind now. You know, Ramsey's been there a long, long time. All of the other, like, longevity Arsenal players have all left. You know, you think of Walcott, you think of Wilshire now. Um, you know, we've, we're losing, like, the, the legends, really. Um, you know, in, in regards to the attack, we've got Lacazette, we've got Bamian, we've got Urza, we've got Awobi, we've got Danny Welbeck. So, going forward, we're absolutely fine, in my opinion. I don't think we need any more, you know, attacking options. Maybe, kind of, someone to partner Urza, or maybe, like, a, a central attacking midfielder. Um, but, you know, that's not imperative. What is imperative is the goalkeeper, is the centre-back, is the CDM. And we're just, we're, we're making, you know, signings early. We're doing our business early. And that is very, very nice. Now, the fixtures, which I've got in front of me, I've got this, my sister, who, uh, you know, is my um, kind of artiste for the channel. She does all my graphic designs for me. Um, she kind of compiled this together. And, um, you know, the, the fixtures are always an interesting thing when they get um, announced because, you know, every single Premier League side has got to play every other Premier League side at least twice you know, during the season. So, you know at some point you're going to play, you know, your Man Cities, your Man United, your Liverpool's, your Tottenham's, your Chelsea's. However, the the schedule and how they, they pan out in terms of the fixture list, um, it can dictate a season, really. Um, and, and what I mean by this is that, you know, say you're top of the table with kind of, you know, five, six games to go, you've got a little bit of cushion and then you've got to play, you know, you know successively challenging games. It can impact you. Vice versa, if you have a really tough start to the season and you get off on a really bad, like, get off on the wrong foot, um, it can just ruin your whole season, really. So, you know, the fixture list does play a part. It doesn't play a huge part, but it does play a fairly substantial part in a Premier League season. And having said that, you look at Arsenal's fixture list, you think, what is Unai Emery's, what is his first game? What's going to be the first game, the first Premier League game that he's going to be managing? Well, we kick off our Premier League campaign on August the 11th at the Emirates. So you're thinking, great, a home game. That's going to be absolutely brilliant. But Unai Emery and Arsenal, their first Premier League encounter on the opening weekend of the season, we take on, yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we take on the reigning champions. That's right, the reigning champions, Manchester City, 
on the first day of the season. That's day one, right? And coincidentally, Unai Emery has never beaten Pep Guardiola, okay? So you may be thinking, a little bit of a tricky start, but I bet Arsenal have got kind of a nice run of games where they're playing some of the, you know, the bottom sides. And Unai Emery, should he lose that game against Manchester City, he's got time to get points on the board. Well, our first away day of the season, um, which takes place on um, August the 19th, or August the 18th, it'll probably be on a Sunday, so it'll be August the 19th. Um, we travel up to London, okay? And we then go to Stamford Bridge to face the former Premier League champions, Chelsea, under, at this moment, Antonio Conte. <laughs> like, generally, that is like a ridiculously difficult start, right? You can't get a much tougher start than that. We've then got, um, we've actually got three very difficult games. We've got Manchester City at home, Chelsea away, and then we're back at the Emirates on the 25th of August for a London derby against West Ham. That is quite a difficult first, you know, free batch of games. Now, we've got fairly a nice September and a decent October. Um, and then our next big game is on November the 3rd when we play Liverpool at the Emirates. Um, but, you know, I've seen a lot of videos where Arsenal fans have been kind of up in arms and been ranting and raving and saying that the fixture list is, you know, unfair. And some people even refer to the fixture list as obscene. And uh, I don't have that mindset I don't have that that kind of thought and that trained thought process in my head um you know what I think I'm about to you know go into something in your head um no what I um believe and what I feel is that actually having a tough start um is actually going to be a positive rather than a negative and let me explain because you know there's going to be a lot of pressure on Unai Emery and you know Everyone, all eyes are going to be descending upon Unai Emery, okay? And um, with that, what that means is that we're going to see and we're going to find very, you know, we're going to answer the question. Because the question I have is, is this Arsenal side, are they going to play for Unai Emery? Because it's quite clear and quite evident that over the last kind of two seasons, you know, the group of players that we've got are good enough. They are good enough because they've proved it. They can do it, but they can't do it over a consistent basis. Now with Unai Emery at the helm, you know, in the past, you know, you were saying, some people said that the players are just absolutely shit, but most of the people were saying that the reason why the players are not performing is because of Arsene Wenger. Well, Arsene Wenger is not there anymore, so we're going to see whether these players have got it in them and whether they weren't playing for Arsene Wenger or if they're just not good, really. And we're going to find that out and we're going to have that question answered at the very early stages of the season. Because what you normally find is when a new manager takes over a big club and they go on a really good run um, and they, they haven't played any of the big boys, everyone you know goes, oh, well, they haven't played you know, Manchester United or Manchester City or Tottenham yet. So once they play one of the big sides, then we can evaluate and judge them. You will judge Unai Emery right from the get-go. We've got some pre-season games. Uh, we're in the International um, Champions Tournament. Um, in in kind of after the World Cup um, concludes at kind of towards the end of July, beginning of August. So we're going to see what um, the Unai Emery side um, looks like. We're going to see Arsenal in action before the Premier League gets underway. But that's when it really matters. And, you know, if, if, they can beat Manchester City, beat Chelsea. Imagine if Arsenal get nine points out of nine, which is going to be very, very challenging and very, very difficult. But it could spur Arsenal on to a fabulous season. And you've got to play them at some point, you know, and because they're so, it, that's such a, a heavyweight start to the season, such a heavyweight clash, that actually I think it's going to, you know, the players are going to be G'd up for it. Unai Emery is going to be, you know, determined to get off on, on to a winning start. And yes, there's a there's a chance and a risk that it could um, end in Unai Emery losing kind of his first two, three games potentially and, you know, start off on the wrong foot and just it, it could be disastrous and it could be. But then you could lose your first three games of the season if you're playing, you know, Newcastle, Southampton or Huddersfield. You know, it's you've got to play the big boys at some point. And I would be, I'm actually quite happy to get both of those really challenging games out of the way. And then at that point we can assess exactly, we're going to assess very, very early on and very, very quickly um, how good this Arsenal side is, how good of a manager Unai Emery is. And all of those questions are going to be answered very, very early on. And I think that could be, I mean, that's much more of a positive than a negative in my eyes. Um, other key games, we've got um, quite a, a tough Christmas. We've got Tottenham, uh, uh, so we've got the North London derby on December the 1st. Three days later, we're away at Old Trafford to play Manchester United. And our last game of 2018 is Liverpool at Anfield. Um, we've got quite a nice game. We've got Chelsea sandwiched um, in between a away game at West Ham and a home game against Cardiff. We play Manchester City on the 2nd of February. And then we play Manchester United on the 3rd of March. 
okay. Um, and we've also got Tottenham Hotspur six days before that on the 2nd of March. Um, so April, May, um, we've got quite a nice run of games. So if we're like, say hypothetically, I don't think we will be, but say we're in a title challenge, if we can get to kind of um, after that Manchester United game and be five, six points clear with kind of, you know, eight games to go, we could be in a very, very good position. And even if we're trying to get and cement ourselves Champions League football, I mean, the fixture list is surprisingly kind. I think, you know, I'd rather have a really, you know, horrible start and a really difficult start than a really difficult end. And that is a what our fixture list is. It's going to be exciting. You know, Manchester City to kick start Premier League season and then Chelsea, you know, seven days later. And Lives and Arsenal is going to be popping off, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm just, I'm so excited to see you and I am in action I'm so excited to see the team in action and I just I can't wait I mean I'm loving the World Cup at the moment um, but you know I can't wait for Premier League football to return and it's going to be it's going to be a fantastic season um, so those are the kind of the three points really that I wanted to address in this video we've touched and gave them my thoughts of feelings to Leno uh, signing Wilshire leaving and the Arsenal's fixture list um, so if you enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a like subscribe to if you are new around it and check out my other great content as well let me know your thoughts and feelings to everything that we've covered in this video down in the comment section below um, I will be doing a match preview and match review of England's game against Panama so stay tuned for that and also um, I'm right at the end of the DJ Backpress music moments and um, that's going to be sandwiched in between the, the, the football videos I know I've done a lot of football videos but I'm going to put that DJ Backpress music uh, moments probably after the, the two videos um, with England up against Panama um, and it'll be a nice little break before we have the Belgium game um, to, to see off the World Cup really I've got my World Cup predictions out I've got the Premier League season review, the Champions League season review, the FA Cup season review. There's so much football content on the channel. So just check it out. They will be on screen now. And until next time, take care. And I shall speak to you all later. Take care and I shall see you all soon.